Albert Sims was the guy who started Sims in 1917. He was picking up cans on a bike and it kind of grew from there. We opened here about two years ago. This is the main processing facility for all of New York City's residential metal, glass, and plastic. So we have a total of 85 people that work here in Brooklyn, around 20 people working in the sorting, doing quality control, watching the finished product and removing things that don't belong. The turbine, it's really exciting to have that here on, on site. It's the first commercial size wind turbine in New York City. A renewable energy on site from solar panels and from the wind turbine, that covers about 20% of our, our energy needs to power our equipment. We don't have any trucks, so from Bronx and Queens, whatever they're sending to us is getting here on barges. Barges are very simple structures. A barge can hold the same as 100 trucks, so that's a pretty easy calculation. After September 11th, Bloomberg really had to cut a lot of things. One of the things they cut was plastic and glass recycling. At the time, the city felt like they didn't have a really good deal on the recycling program, so Bloomberg wanted to work with one company, really develop a strong uh, public-private partnership. So although it was maybe not the best like PR move to stop recycling, it really was done with the intention of how do we make this a long-term sustainable plan. We use optical scanners to separate out plastic. This facility has 16 optical scanners. Each type of plastic has its own footprint that it'll read that every time it reflects off of it. And also allows us to do more double checking so that we can clean up the material faster. Each one of those scanners can be reprogrammed to sort something else out. We've gone through things like adding cartons into the recycling program. It required adding conveyor belts and adding optical scanners. It's something we have in mind that we might have to do in the future again. An optical scanner could be set to separate out any type of plastic today, but we're not gonna set it to separate out, let's say, bioplastics, because we're not getting enough of it in and there's no one looking to buy it. Before, for plastics, it was a really limited program. It was just bottles and jugs that you could put in, but they've now expanded to all rigid, all hard plastic. We can't recycle every single type of rigid plastic, but we can do enough of it now that it was worth making the rule really simple, making it very accessible for all New Yorkers. We have magnets that pull out any metal that might be in there, scanners pull out any plastic, and then additional scanners to positively sort out any clear glass. So the clear glass we sell to manufacturers for bottles and jars. Then the brown, the green, the blue, we sell that as a sub-base aggregate, so below construction projects, roadways, um, as part of, the, part of the foundation, instead of using a gravel. More than half of everything that we should be getting is going straight into landfills or incinerators. We call it the capture rate. So of everything that's designated recyclable, we're only getting 44%. So that means many bottles, cans, not making it to the recycling facilities. That's all stuff that we have all the infrastructure to handle tomorrow, basically, if people just started putting it in the bins. That's a, a big challenge for the city right now. If everything we see in the original pile will be about 13% we'll go all the way through the system and won't actively be sorted out. We'll separate, we'll bail up, and then we'd send to either a landfill or an incinerator. Landfills, incinerators, there's not any close ones. They do have to travel quite a far distance. The tipping costs are really, are pretty high for landfills, incinerators. At the baseline level, we have big financial incentive to recycle as much as we can instead of sending it to a landfill. When we process the metal, glass, and plastic, the city pays us a tipping fee. If we end up making profits above a certain threshold, we share them back with the city. But if we're not, if we're just covering our operating costs, uh, we don't owe the city back any money. This is a really tough time for recycling. With the oil prices being very low, companies that used to buy recycled plastic are now switching towards virgin plastic because it's currently cheaper. As energy intensive as this may appear, it's much less than getting oil from offshore. Recycling saves about 90% of the energy than extracting bauxite from the earth. Paper, it's about 50% of the energy. We hope that in, you know, when the oil prices go back up, this will be a viable alternative to that, to that virgin oil. We are producing a lot of high quality recyclables out of here, so there are a lot of companies coming to us looking to buy and offering competitive prices. We'll be separating it out into at least a dozen products, and then each product would get sold to at least you know, three different customers, for example. Plastic bags are something that we put a lot of work into separating out, and then there's hardly anyone who wants to buy them. So that's one of the things that we have been exporting. They get stuck in equipment, they bring down the quality of some of the other materials, they're really dirty when they come out of our system, and we don't have any consistent customers for that material. We're just like a transfer site for the paper. We receive it and then um, distribute it to other paper recyclers in the area. 
One thing that we're looking into now with Department of Sanitation is potentially single stream. That's something the mayor announced that he wants to do by 2020. Really the biggest thing potentially for the city is uh, uh, collection costs. They do send out a separate truck for metal glass plastic and paper, so to be able to collect it all in one truck could be more efficient. You can put in ovens, we're happy to get bicycles, refrigerators. They do have to be depolluted, so they get a Department of Sanitation sticker put on it and we'll put it onto a barge, send it over to our metal management side of the business, and they'll run it through big shredders. One strange thing that we get pretty consistently is bowling balls. Um, <laughs> it's like very thick rubber with cement inside, definitely not recyclable. Our shredder can handle it, but don't put them in. They're gonna go to a landfill anyway, it just costs extra money to have them sent through here. <laughs>